Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Cole and I have the pleasure once again of speaking with John Mariani about all things food. Hey, John, good to see you again. Morning. Not too long ago, we talked about sustainability in the seafood industry. Uh, very enlightening, very important discussion. I wanted to ask you about hotels, the, the general hospitality industry. Um, sustainability, of course, is, I don't know if it's a fad, it's a real thing, but it's certainly a hot topic. Yes. Um, my view of life is that everything is a fad until it changes into the next fad. And you can make money off almost anything in this world, uh, even growing kale and saying it's going to make your lives longer. Um, won't. <laughs> There's a lot of kale growers out there and on every menu. Um, it used to be that, and let's talk a higher end than a, I mean, not a higher end than a Marriott, but a good Marriott, certainly, uh, or a good Hilton, uh, a good hotel. Um, it used to be, and certainly at the posh level, if you go to the Bel Air Hotel or the Beverly Hills Hotel out there or something, um, or one of the Disney hotels, uh, you would go in and expect a certain hospitality at the desk, of course, uh, your room to be ready, which is in increasingly difficult to, to get. Um, but then you walk in and you see, okay, it looks clean. Ooh, nice big bathroom. Oh, they got French milled soap. <laughs> you know, and they have uh, toothbrushes for both my wife and I, uh, and they have uh, fluffy, fluffy pillows. And oh, I'm going to count the threads in this, in this uh, linen. And um, the air conditioning is not, not loud. And what's in the mini bar? Oh, they have six different types of, of liquor, and they all oh, they have my favorites. So those triscuits are in there, um, and that's what you came to expect, and even what you would come to uh, uh, complain about if uh, you're paying good money uh, at a time when uh, there's a lot of competition out there for, for your dollar, both here and abroad. And uh, deluxe hotels do very much better overall in terms of how much they get to make profit because they have many more options to charge much more money at every level of the property that is in the dining room you know, at breakfast and tea and, and everything is going to cost more uh the the, the spa fees the, the all of those so at the luxury level they have always for the last 20 years they've just been trying to add much more and more luxury uh, at a higher higher price um but the paradigm has shifted. I like to say that about once every four years. The paradigm has shifted in hospitality. What we're finding now is for all sorts of obvious reasons <clears throat> and reasons obvious to most people, that sustainability has to be part of hospitality too. <clears throat> now, that could be as simple as do you liquefy, uh, do you, liquefy, <laughs> do you um, uh, uh, filter your water? Yes, of course, we filter our water. Uh, this is especially uh, important in Europe, where for years and years, everybody assumed that if you drank the water of the tap, you were going to get Montezuma's Napoleon's revenge over the next hours. That's why even today, the Europeans uh, uh, water. Simple way, but that's how they are. They're all getting air conditioned. A lot of Europeans don't like air conditioning. But as uh, the important thing is, first, if you build a plant, tell how does it fit into it? What are you taking? How many areas resources? Boy, you guys know this better than we do. Um, how much of the water? sources are you going to be sucking up? How much are you going to be allowed to use? Will there be a quota? Is there a way technologically to cut down on the amount of water that goes through the flushing of a single toilet? Um, all of these things uh, are very, very important to do with the immediate environment in which your hotel is set. 
They are also trying now not to ship in marble from Carrara, but to use the natural landscape as a guide to the design and decor uh, that fits into the environment. Um, how does your hotel, what, what is your carbon footprint going to be like? Because nothing runs more electricity than uh, air conditioning uh, in, uh, in a hotel and also in the restaurants where they're using a gas or electricity. I mean, they have tremendous, tremendous energy bills. How do we cut down on that? Okay, in every possible way. So whoever is designing uh, says, oh, we want to put up a 32 foot, foot ceiling here. Here, uh, well, what is that going to do to our the air quality? What is that going to do with the amount of heating? Because hot air rises, um, cold, hot air rises. Yeah, no, cold air rises, right? Yeah, cold air rises, and and so you're going to have to call in a technologist who knows exactly how much that's going to affect the uh, environment in that respect. Um, Obviously, by this point, if you haven't replaced your refrigerant, gone from whatever it's called, fluoron, to whatever the, the good gas is, all that has to be ripped out uh, and, uh, and, and the good gas being put in. So I was talking to um, a guy whose name is uh, Daniel Luddington, VP Development of Small Luxury Hotels of the World. Um, and small luxury hotels are, are just that. They're like... 200, they could have 10 rooms, they could have 20 rooms, they could have 200 rooms. And he has, uh, they have been building and adapting what they can, can, can uh, what they call the considerate, the considerate collection. So it is considerate of every person who comes through that door, who, because they did surveys and found that 57% of people now will choose a restaurant, a, a hotel or a restaurant not on its amenities as on its friendliness to the environment. I mean, these are people who uh, only want to eat certain foods. They only want to eat fish that are raised humanely. Um, they, they are much um, interested if you have a garden where your chef is growing his own herbs and, and corn and, and, and everything else out back. Uh, where are the flowers coming? You're grow, growing your own flowers. These are things that people are asking about and demanding these days. So uh, hotels have had to pay um, uh, pay close attention. So they, they surveyed over 1,500 members of their own loyalty program. And two-thirds believe sustainability is now more important now than pre-COVID for obvious reasons, you know, what's coming through the air. Remember Legionnaire's disease? Sure. Philadelphia, that was about 40 years ago. And a very, very nice hotel, I think it was called the Bellevue Stratford in Philadelphia had a, a, a convention of Legionnaires, American Legionnaires, and many, many of them came very down, very, very sick. And they pinned it on something in the exhaust um, uh, and the air in the air ducts of the hotel that was making people sick. Um, that's something that nobody really thought very, very much. Um, they also found that over half of wary of hotels <clears throat> making claims that simply aren't true. So they, they launched this considerate uh, collection. Um, and he says, you know, we've all seen for years a card saying, if you want to help the environment, um, put your towel on the rack, meaning you'll use it again, put it on the floor if you want fresh towels. Uh, same, on, same on the bed. Do you want your sheets changed every morning or can you live with your own body sweat for three or four days that you are here? Um, they're all going to be uh, try to become certified green. There's variations on that I need not uh, go into. Um, uh, and he, talk, he talks about <clears throat> in Dar Alam in Morocco is a great example. They have a memory road project. They're bringing abandoned villages in southern Morocco back to life to preserve the Berber way of life. So the hotels, which are going to be having visitors, tourists who would love to see the Berber way of life come back to life. That's a tourist attraction. Want to help with that. As a matter of fact, when I was in Morocco, uh, some years ago, we were brought out to this, this Berber 
looked straight out of Lawrence of Arabia. And he's sitting there with the, the robes on and he's on a mat in this his compound. And he used to just be a, a spend his whole life on a camel herding herding sheep and so forth. And uh, he gave it up. He sold his property um, to, I think, uh, I think to a hotel. So I'm sitting there breaking bread with him, Moroccan flatbread and so forth. So I said, I have to assume that you will miss the Arab way of life and being out on the desert, the camels with your, with your sheep and your lambs. And he says, are you kidding me? He says, my forebears have been doing that for 5,000 years. It was not a fun day. <laughs> so when I could sell out, he sold out. So to hear that they're trying to bring back these villages is a really, really nice idea. So that's what they can do, and that's what they are doing. And uh, any hotel and restaurant uh, that does not intend to take those considerations into consideration are uh, battling against the winds of change and an environment which is going to get very hotter. So you've got to get more efficient, and it's going to get wetter. And uh, so you got to watch where you build your hotel on the seashore, by the seashore. Um, because it's not going to be a seashore in a couple of years uh, with rising tides. So all of these things are ones nobody worried about. You know, out there in you know in, in Malibu, building houses on stilts, dumb. You know, once not dumb, once pretty cool, but now dumb. Um, building on the banks of uh, the Malibu there with all that rich mud just re ready to slide away, dumb. Well, you got to be willing to pay for it if you want all of the all of that uh, sustainability, I guess. Well, the insurance company pays once; they're not going to pay you twice. Yeah, but the federal government keeps bailing everybody out. Uh, oh, we build by the seashore. Uh, we'll give you a couple more piles to put into the ground, and that all gets washed away. So, uh, well, you uh, you in uh, Lower Upstate New York are are going to be. Uh, 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 oceanfront property before you know it. So you're in a good place, I would think. But you know, my, I personally, we live on a hill here in uh, in Westchester County. Uh, but we had a twice in our 40 years here, we had torrential rain over several days. And even on the hill, the ground got so super saturated, it started coming up through the cellar. Hmm. And we sat down there on our hands and knees with mops and with sponges and with a hose and so forth. And after doing that twice for like 18 hours, bailing us out, and we weren't like the people down the block who had four or five feet in there. We had we were keeping one inch of water at bay. So hmm. we got these things, French drains, and they dig them, dig them all around the side of the basement, and they fill them with gravel, and they're actually drains like gutters that you have in your roof. So now when it comes in, when, when it starts to come in, a generator kicks in and sucks any water uh, out from those French trains. It's lovely. And we haven't had any problems since. Well, uh, so who, who'd, who'd, who'd have thunk? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I know for, for the last several years, uh, whether it be higher end hotels or medium price, uh, the towels were one of the first things of because I don't really want to run a laundry. Uh, I mean, it was terribly expensive electricity, the amount of water, so on and so forth. But uh, uh, I guess the chains have uh, caught on because the public uh, uh, is taking uh, uh, the issues with global warming and climate change and all those things seriously. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure that it will be a growing trend as uh, people uh, don't want to waste as much, perceive waste as much resources. Uh, uh, to be comfortable when the lack of having a, a fresh towel every day, as opposed to every second or third day, depending on how long you're saying, as well as the sheets, those are the kind of things that people live with at home anyway. So uh, kind of interesting. Thank you for uh, bringing us up to date. You wouldn't necessarily have thought about uh, sustainability in the hotels. One key note is that you should always turn your electricity off when you leave your hotel, but the scuzzier the hotel, Leave your television on, because if somebody wants to break into a room, mm. he's not like 
break the room where somebody's watching television. But the good news is that the LED TVs don't use up that much power, so it's not a bad trade-off. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.